Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the Holy Scripture Mysticism of Ramayana. Commentaries by my Guruji, Swami Jyotirmanandji Maharaj. Narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilananda. So we are currently studying the episode of Ram, Rama uh, and Ravana's battle. Continuing from there. Soon Ravana again resorted to demoniac magic and created illusory image of himself everywhere that confused and terrified the monkeys and bears. But Rama, recovering him from his temporary loss of consciousness, dispelled those illusions and continued destroying the heads and arms of the demon king. Terribly infuriated, angry, Ravana discharged so many arrows that most of the monkeys and bears fell unconscious, including Hanuman. Seeing this, Jambavan, the great bear, attacked Ravana and continued kicking him until Ravana fell down unconscious. Only when the darkness of the night began to pervade the earth did Jambavan retire and leave the unconscious Ravana in the hands of his concerned attendants. At that time, the other monkeys and bears also regained consciousness and returned to Rama. Ravana returned to normal consciousness during the night and early in the morning he again began to fight Rama. Due to the ingenious deceptions created by his demoniac magic, the battle continued in a most intensive form. Desirous of finishing off the seemingly indestructible enemy once and for all, Sri Rama looked at Vibhishana for advice. Vibhishana told Rama that a special nectar abiding in the navel of Ravana was keeping him alive and causing his heads and arms to be constantly regenerated. The moment Rama heard this secret, he discharged a series of arrows which dried up the nectar, cut off Ravana's twenty arms and heads, and severed his trunk in half, and finally brought Ravana to his end. Those divine arrows of Rama then lifted the arms and heads of Ravana, placed them before Mandodri, and came back home again to rest in the quiver of Rama. Then the spirit of Ravana arose effulgent from Ravana's severed body and entered into Rama's mouth. Seeing this, Shiva and Brahma were delighted and there was rejoicing all over the universe because Rama had completed his divine mission of destroying Ravana. The confrontations with Ravana is the last confrontation in the spiritual movement. So this is the mystical meaning of the fight. Ravana mystically represents ignorance or avidya. His ten heads symbolize the five senses of perception and five organs of action known as the ten indriyas in Sanskrit. Indriyas means senses. Ignorance dominating the ten indriyas is the cause of all miseries in life. All demoniac forces that harass the individual and humanity at large emanate from that ignorance. Therefore, when one fights against ignorance, it is his last fight and there is no fight like it. In this ultimate stage of spiritual movement, the enemy to be overpowered is very subtle and endowed with unimaginable magical power. Therefore, the battle becomes most intense and mysterious. Ravana was endowed with the boon of receiving new sets of heads and arms the moment the old ones were cut off. And the new sets were even more vigorous than the previous ones. Those ever regenerating heads and arms are symbolic of the impure thoughts and desires of the mind based on egoistic illusions. Even though one goes on negating them, they come back again and again and they continue to arise until ignorance has been removed at its source, at its very root. In the Ramayana of Tulsidas, the source of Ravana's indestructibility lay in the demoniac nectar within his navel and when Rama's arrows dried up that nectar, Ravana could no longer regenerate his heads and arms and he was destroyed. 
According to Kundalini Yoga, the Manipur Chakra at the navel is the seat of Karma Granthi. It's called the knot of karma, which continues to nourish and sustain ignorance. Herein lies the demoniac nectar of negative karmas accumulated from numerous births. In order to give a death blow to ignorance, this karmic storehouse must be dried up by the fiery weapon of intuitional knowledge. The ascending Kundalini Shakti then pierces the Anahata Chakra at the heart center, which is the seat of Kama Granthi, the knot of desire. Finally, having penetrated the Agnya Chakra, which is in between your eyebrows, uh, it brings about the destruction of Avidya Granthi, the knot of ignorance. This entire ascent of Kundalini is implied as Rama's arrow, bringing about the annihilation of Rama, Ravana. Sorry. It is important to note that partial openings of the chakras have been suggested in the various episodes of Ramayana. And this is a very profound mystical science. Uh, Kundalini means serpent power and it is it resides at the base of the spine and it can go all the way to the head, uh, top of your skull. It's called the Sahasrara Chakra. The destruction of Kabanda paves the way for the piercing of Manipura Chakra. Uh, the destruction of Bali creates a passage through the Anahata Chakra at the heart. And with the enthronement of Sugriva and burning of Lanka by Hanuman, the Vishuddhi Chakra is made vulnerable to the ascending Kundalini. With the termination of Kumbhakarna and Meghanada, a mystical channel opens through the Agya Chakra. So Swamiji is guiding us here that this is the journey of a serious aspirant as he proceeds and progresses. He is as if climbing a new mountain, uh, overcoming innumerable obstacles but yet after that he is emerging victorious and moving to the next target. However, when Ravana is destroyed, the ascent of Kundalini is complete. From Manipura or the lowest chakra to Agya and Rama's return to Ayodhya symbolizes the ultimate goal attained by Kundalini Shakti as the thousand petaled lotus of the Sahasrara chakra unfolds at the crown of the head. And that is the goal for a serious aspirant. These mystical energies reside right within our own own um, body but these are subtle energies these are pranas nadis all these are not visible to us by x-rays or by looking at our body parts these are just mystical channels that uh, sustain our body prana is the same thing so we have to understand and continue to read these scriptures again and again to understand the deeper mystical import of these messages the famous Saranga Bo of Rama is symbolic of purified intellect. His arrows are divine thoughts and the quiver that holds the arrow represents the purified chitta or unconscious itself. When one is treading the path leading to enlightenment, his unconscious becomes purified and his intellect becomes intuitive. His entire mind tunes itself with the cosmic mind. Therefore, the divine thought that emanates from him are like the arrows of Rama. Just as Rama's arrows never miss their mark, the thoughts of a pure mind cannot be obstructed by anyone. They never fail. Just as Rama's arrows always return to the quiver after they have done their work, divine thoughts can never be lost. These thoughts, referred to as Sat Sankalpa, bring immense good to humanity by dispelling ignorance and encouraging the emergence of Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram, Truth, Auspiciousness and Beauty. And we will continue this beautiful journey that we are doing together in tomorrow's Satsanga. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Om Tat Sat.